So in this video, we are going to talk about the Z1 designer and the various geometric shapes that you can use in the designer to create your dashboard. So this is things like rectangles, uh, rounded rectangles, ellipses, lines, and the multi-line tool. So here we are in the Z1 designer and I'm going to create a new dash. Let's call this my dash. Click OK. So we're going to talk about uh, the geometric shapes, the rectangles, ellipses, um, lines, and multi-line tool that you can use when you're creating your dashboard. Okay, so we've got our new dashboard and on the left here we have our toolbar with our pointer tool or selection tool and then the objects we're going to talk about, the rectangle, the rounded rectangle, the ellipse tool, the line, and the multi-line. So first we're going to look at the rectangle tool. So I select that tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle onto my dashboard. So it's important to uh, remember when you're designing your dashboard that things like these shapes will be static. They're not going to change as you drive around the track. The rectangle will always be there or a line will always be there. It's not going to move. So on here on the layers we have our foreground and our background. The background layer is for uh, items that aren't going to be changing. So things like these uh, geometric shapes. The foreground is for things that would change. So if you were going to place an RPM or a speed or something like that, that should be in the foreground. But for uh, this video and uh, these geometric shapes, we're going to put them all in, in the background. So you want to make sure that the background layer here is active. So it is, it's highlighted in blue and it says active. If it looks like this, then your foreground is actually the active layer and objects will be placed in the foreground. So we're going to click here on background and we're going to place objects in the background. So uh, I've got my rectangle tool selected and to place the rectangle you just left click and drag to however big you want your rectangle to be. Once the rectangle is there you'll see at the bottom here we have object properties and uh, it gets a name which is the rectangle matching here in the background our newly created rectangle and it has a stroke color and a fill color. So right now the stroke is yellow which is the uh, border and the fill color is uh, transparent. So it just sees whatever the background color of the dashboard is. So in this case black. If you want to change one of these, it's the same on any object. You would click the uh, color swatch and now I can choose a new color. So say I want it to be green. Now I have a green rectangle. And uh, for the fill, same thing, click that. Let's say I want a purple rectangle fill. Now the inside of that rectangle is purple. Here you have the coordinates. So you've got the top left and the bottom right. And you can adjust um, the, the uh, location of the rectangle using this. So if you wanted it to be 60 pixels instead of 59, you can type that in and get very specific control of where um, the uh, rectangle is placed and how big it is and then in all four of these boxes. Uh, the final one down here, stroke width, this is the thickness of the uh, line that is being stroked, in this case in green, uh, so the border. So if I want to make it uh, thicker, five, so you get a much thicker line here and you can do um, partial uh, pixels too, so five and a half or one point five, whatever you want it to be. Uh, the reason the uh, decimal ones work like 1.5, obviously you can't draw one and a half pixels, but as the dashboard gets scaled up or down, um, the number of pixels could actually be one or three or five, depending on how big your stroke width actually is. So that's why decimals are allowed in the width of the stroke. So now if we go back and choose a pointer tool, you can also move a rectangle or any object around by clicking on it and just dragging it to where you want it to go. And when a object is selected, it will have one or more of these uh, drag points. So the rectangle is just basically a square, so it has four of them, and you can click and drag them wherever you want them to be to adjust the size of your object. And if you want to create another rectangle, you just click and drag as many rectangles as you want uh, in your design. So now obviously I've got five rectangles here. I don't actually want five. I'm going to delete some of them. So at 
deleting an object is the same for any object. You just right click on the object and choose delete. It'll ask you to confirm yes I do want to delete it. Uh, you can also delete an object by going to the layers. If you click on it, it becomes the selected object and you see here is this one. You can right click and choose delete there. The same uh, confirmation, yes I do want to delete it and so that object uh, gets removed. And I'm also going to get rid of this one. Oops, sorry. I'm going to get rid of this one and this one. Okay. So now let's talk about the rounded rectangle. So that is this tool right here. And a rounded rectangle is quite similar to a rectangle, but the corners can be curved. So uh, I look down here, my display name is my rounded rectangle and I have the same stroke and fill colors and coordinates, but there is this coordinate, sorry, this is corner radius, which is three for the X and three for the Y. So uh, the bigger you make these numbers, the more curved those, those corners will be. So if we go extreme, let's say 30 on both, you'll see you almost get like um, an oval here. Most of the time, you're probably gonna have something around you know, three or five or so, but Depending on your design, maybe the oval is what you're looking for or something with quite uh, curved corners. So you can play with those to make uh, the rounded rectangle look how you want it to look for your design. And then the rest of these are the same, uh, the stroke width uh, and the colors and everything. And uh, the display name, and if you want to change this, just click and you can round the rectangle to or whatever you want to call it. That's how you change the display name. And you see up here, it uh, changes the name here. Uh, next is the ellipse tool. This allows you to draw ellipses or circles. So it's the same way, left click and drag out to place the object. And down in my object properties down here, again it's called ellipse and you can change this to anything you want. Ellipse number two or whatever it's gonna be. And you have your same stroke and fill colors. So let's say I'm gonna fill my ellipse here, I'll fill it with that color. I'm just going to move this down by dragging it. And you have your center of the, and then your radius. So if you want a perfect circle, you want your X and Y radius to be the same. So I'll make those both 59. So now I have a perfect circle. Um, and again, the stroke width is the outside edge of the circle, if you have it defined. Um, this one, uh, circle objects, or sorry, ellipse objects, have just three of these adjustment points. So I can click this one and make it skinnier that way or this way or the one on the bottom right just adjust both at the same time. So you can use those to manipulate your uh, ellipse to uh, get the desired effect for your dashboard. And again, this is going in the background layer. So next, uh, we'll look at a line tool. So this is our line tool and it allows me to simply create a, a single line segment. So I'm gonna click, uh, left click and drag out to wherever I want it to be, which is right here. And I have my line segment. Um, and my object properties down here, the line color is um, yellow. Now you can't make the line invisible uh, by giving it a transparent color because there would be no point. You would see nothing. So uh, for this, I can choose again a color. Let's say we want you know, um, this one and click okay and the line changes color. And you have the points of the first, uh, this is point one and this is point two. So down here, your X and Y's, uh, and the stroke width. So let's say we want a slightly thicker line. So say we want it to be two or even three to make a thicker line. And uh, again, it's in the background because it's something which is not gonna change as you are creating your dash. So we also have a multi-line tool. And uh, this allows you to create multiple line segments which are uh, attached to each other. So you might be wondering, well, I, why do you have that? Why can't I just create multiple line tools and have those uh, start and end at certain locations? So the reason is how the corners match up. So let's say we, have, we create another line and we'll have it connect to our existing line. So this, our first line, it ends at 392.84. So let's make sure that this one starts at 392 and 84. 
So here it looks just fine. You, know, you have my first line and my second line. However, if you make these thicker, and we'll make them extremely thick to show what we're talking about. So we'll do a stroke width of 10 and the same thing here. If you notice here, the corner is very boxy and sort of notched out. So this is why using a, uh, the line tool to create multiple uh, line segments that are to be connected doesn't really work. Um, the multi-line tool, that is what this is designed for. So to create a multi-line, uh, this is the one exception in all the tools, is you click once and let go, and then just drag to where you want it to be. And every time you click, it drops a new um, point in the line. So if I click again, I have another point, and again, another point. To end the multi-line, you do a double click. So I'm going to double click, and now my multi-line has been created. And here you'll see in your object properties that you've got, um, I'm going to do a stroke width of 10, so we can see here the corners uh, join up really nicely, as opposed to in this one where you have this sort of notch. And um, that's why the multi-line tool should be used so anytime you want to have more than one line segment connect to each other. And you can click on any of these adjustments and move your line segments around to wherever you want them to be. And again, uh, it shows up here in my background, multi-line, and I have my two lines. And maybe on this one, you want to call this line number two to differentiate them. And perhaps this one is rectangle number one. And this one is rectangle number two. So continuity on this video definitely gets an A plus for this section. One thing we forgot to mention on the multi-line tool is uh, that you can actually fill the multi-line tool. So right here, I have just a basic shape I created using the multi-line tool. And if I choose a fill color for it, so let's go with this one, this allows you to create basically any sort of shape you want and fill it in with whatever color you want. So as well as just making lines that are uh, connected to each other, you can make sort of any kind of polygon type figure you want using the multi-line tool. That's how you draw, draw uh, geometric shapes in the uh, Z1 Designer. And uh, hopefully this has been a useful video. Uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we will have more videos on the other tools uh, coming up soon. Uh, we'll probably do the uh, the data channel tool uh, and LEDs next because those are um, the next most important things for creating dashboards. So anyway, uh, we'll see you in the next video.